In this video, we will continue our discussion about the steps of a risk assessment. In this section of the tutorial, we will talk about the third step in the nine-step NIST outline for a risk assessment. The third step is the identification of vulnerabilities within the system. A vulnerability is a weakness or a gap that exists in the system and can be exploited. In the previous tutorial, we talked about threats. This, then, is what the threat would look at using to gain unauthorized access to one of the assets that was identified as part of the system characterization. The way that you could go about determining vulnerabilities that might exist in your system, specifically for hardware and software, are by performing scans for known vulnerabilities. There are a number of software tools out there that will perform these scans and give you this information. You can perform some time of assessment, looking at documentation and configurations of software and hardware, then doing research by searching the internet for known vulnerabilities that might exist in the versions you have, talking to people like system administrators or campus IT security. Also, with hardware and software penetration testing can be done. This is different from scanning for known weaknesses, as this actually attempts to exploit known weaknesses and enter the system. And you can look at websites of organizations that provide information on known weaknesses and limitations in technology. For example, you could visit McAfee or Norton's and find information that would give you clues into vulnerabilities you might have. Some examples of vulnerabilities, or things you would be looking for, to help you identify weaknesses or gaps in your system. For example, passwords. Passwords are a very well-known weakness. While they are the most commonly used form of secret identification of an individual for access control, they are also one of the most well-known crackable ways to get into a system. Oftentimes, people without the prompting of a good, strong password policy select weak passwords, and these can be exploited. How are you storing your passwords? Are they being stored in an encrypted version, or are you storing them in plain text? Are you having passwords sent across the network in an encrypted protocol, or are they going across in plain text? Do you have a patching procedure in place for your software? Are the security updates at a minimum being maintained? Oftentimes, there are reasons you can't update a certain piece of software. If that is the case, what are the known risks involved with that? If this is the case, this vulnerability needs to be identified so that some type of control can be put in place to mitigate it. Are your administrators actually following the policies and procedures that are in place? Are they updating and performing backups? These are all things that need to be looked at when identifying vulnerabilities. You also just need to be aware of things that are well known. Web servers are a well known source of vulnerabilities. It is just assumed that they will have weaknesses. Any type of software that is complicated and used for computer controls are going to be a source of weakness. This can be seen, for example, in Windows. Microsoft provides monthly security patches for found problems in the operating system. You need to keep this in mind and be aware that you need to address these issues. Be aware that you will have to deal with zero-day issues. These are ones that aren't even known about yet. They are new problems that will arise because of previously unknown weakness has been found and exploited. You need to be aware of this type of thing and be able to deal with the issue. Another big weakness is the human factor, whether it is carelessness or some type of social engineering. Do your employees know about ignoring phishing attempts in email? Do they know what the proper email policies are? Are they following them? Are they using the system as outlined in the acceptable use agreement? These are all the type of vulnerabilities that need to be addressed when doing the vulnerability assessment part of risk assessment. In this video, we have looked at determining what vulnerabilities are present in your system and how to identify them for your risk assessment. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.